flown back towards Washington, D.C. for 40 minutes without being detected by the FAA's radar or even the superior radar possessed by the U.S. military. Why did the Bush administration cover up the fact that the head of the Pakistani intelligence agency was in Washington the week of 9-11 and reportedly had $100,000 wired to Mohammed Abata considered the ringleader of the hijackers? Did the Secret Service allow Bush and, uh, to complete his elementary school visit, apparently unconcerned about his safety or of that of the school children? Let me again ask you this question. If you believe that about your government, wouldn't you want to find out who in our government was trying to kill innocent Americans? 3,000 innocent Americans! So, Mr. Beck, what do we have here? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Mr. Beck is a 9-11 conspiracy theorist. We need to help you out, Mr. Beck. Just a second. I'll be right back. Doing a little favor for Mr. Beck. There you go, Mr. Beck. You need a tinfoil hat because the government's probably trying to read your mind. Looks good on you, actually. You probably believe Barack Obama is a space alien, too, don't you, Mr. Beck? Because you have questions about our government and our government's involvement in one of the major tragedies of my lifetime. You question that, so therefore, you're a whack job. But, you know, one thing about this whole truther thing is Glenn Beck wants us to think that it's just totally impossible that our government would ever do something like that. Or even think about doing something like that. Well, that's really strange, Mr. Beck. Because I'm sure that you read a lot and you've read a lot about what the government does. And therefore, you would know about Operation Northwoods, possibly. Where the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the CIA came up with a plot to create domestic terrorism back in 1962. And blame it on Cuba. And they figured that once they pulled out this terrorist attack, which included hijacking planes, setting off bombs, that uh, they would be able to get enough domestic and international support to invade Cuba. Well, that plan made it all the way to Kennedy's desk, Mr. Beck, where he shot it down. We don't know all the reasons why Kennedy killed the plan other than one memo that states that Kennedy was concerned about having enough troops to handle an invasion of Cuba with potential other hot spots in Berlin. Nothing was said, Mr. Beck, or mentioned about the collateral deaths of innocent American civilians. Nothing. It's all about troop numbers, Mr. Beck. So, thank God, Kennedy didn't go along with it. Now, I'm not a 9-11 truther. I believe, like uh, Deborah, that I don't think they were. And as you have said, there are some questions out there that you know maybe people would be interested in. But, you know, I don't think, after reading about Operation Northwoods, Mr. Beck, I don't think I could ever be 100% sure of what our government does.
All right. So let's look at another player in this whole mess. Governor Gardasil. Rick Perry. Ah, well, there's a, a handsome man there. Looks good in James Downing Glenn. Good old Governor Gardasil. He's been involved in several questionable deals. Uh, he's a man that came from modest means who by being a politician is now a millionaire. Didn't do it on your politician salary, did you Gardasil? <clears throat> so why would Beck, you know, this governor of Texas, why would he continue to to attack her on his radio show, on his television show, for over a week. Why would he do that? You know, I figured it'd be a one-day deal, and that would be the end of it. But no, that goes on and on and on. Why would he do that? Maybe the answer actually has to do with Governor Gardasil. Let's question with boldness again and look at three players. One of these players I haven't talked about, but let's look at three people that were brought up in a blog out of Austin earlier this week. Okay, we've got Clear Channel CEO Lowry Mays, Governor Gardasil, a.k.a. Rick Perry, and Glenn Beck. How are these people related? Well, Clear Channel is a, a radio company, owns radio stations, and puts together programming, that sort of thing. They own a couple of radio stations here in Houston, and in the, it's all conservative talk radio. <clears throat> all right. So, in the Glenn Beck program comes on Clear Channel. So there's a relationship between Clear Channel and Glenn Beck. But how does Governor Gardasil fit, fit into all of this? Well... Something else that is interesting. I know it's kind of crude, but I'm on a limited budget. Okay, we got Larry Mays, the CEO of Clear Channel. He's a big Perry supporter. He's given him $300,000 over the last 10 years. And Glenn Beck gets $10 million a year from Mr. Lowry. So Mr. Lowry is actually Glenn Beck's radio boss. He's the one that cuts the check to Glenn Beck. <clears throat> so now <clears throat> all of this makes sense. It's all about the money. Follow the money. Glenn Beck, they say he's in support of the Constitution and people that support the Constitution, but in reality, he's just a puppet for an interest group. Why Lowry Mays supports Governor Gardasil, I don't know, but uh, I'm sure they're in, they could be involved in various side deals that make uh, each other money. I don't know. That's just speculation on my part. We do know that they both attended the same university as well. They're both, they both went to uh, Texas A&M where uh, Governor Gardasil was a cheerleader, a male 